Okay, beautiful, so let's get started. <sighs> so, as I was thinking about this upcoming topic today, how to be a better human, I thought it would be fitting to share with you all the top three life principles that I currently have at this time. For many years, I absorbed wisdom from various teachers and books and practices. And I have, for myself, narrowed it down to three principles that I have that, for me, help guide my everyday life. So I thought perhaps I would share them with you and perhaps they could be of some benefit to you as well. So my top three, in no particular order, the first one is the principle of moderation. Maybe I said this just now as like with a question mark inflection, moderation, because it's probably the one that I struggle with the most out of my three life principles. Um, to make, help make myself and shape myself into a better human being, I am aware that I have a tendency personally toward extremes. And maybe it's partly a result of being an Aries. I'm a double Aries, Aries sun and Aries moon. Perhaps it's a result of many other factors of my upbringing or whatever the reasons, but I just realized within myself that I have a tendency toward extremes and um, addiction as well, addictive patterns, um, whether in eating, um, whether in even um, seemingly healthy things like exercise, sometimes I can take it too far. And in certain relationship um, and communication patterns, I have really uh, I have a predilection toward extremes. Um, I'm either like all in or all out, right? And so my practice has been to bring in a sense of moderation into my life, bring in a sense of balance. So when my ego or my um, ingrained behavior wants to push me towards being a... Um, taking something to the extreme, then I stop and notice like, oh my gosh, I am doing that thing again. <laughs> and I need to bring in a sense of moderation into my life. So my first um, philosophy, practice, understanding that makes me a better human is moderation. Moderation, moderation, moderation. And it is definitely daily practice for sure. The second thing that I work towards cultivating in my life to make me a better human is a sense of gratitude. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. When I wake up every single morning, the first thing I do when I'm coming into consciousness, um, before I get out of bed, I hit snooze on my alarm and I spend the next five or ten minutes laying in bed half conscious but thinking of all the different things I'm grateful for in my life. So it could be anything as simple as I'm grateful for this warm bed um, ranging to I'm grateful for the amazing work that I'm going to do today working with so-and-so um, so every day I start the day with gratitude and it's a profoundly healing practice that I have, bringing gratitude into my life. I definitely think it makes me a better human because it helps me to not get caught in complaining mode and victim mode and scarcity mode. 
um, that feeling that we sometimes have where it's like nothing is ever good enough or we just want more. And also, too, the gratitude helps me to... Um, it plays into the moderation, the my cultivating moderation in my life because um, when I have a sense of moderation, I also have a sense of gratitude and vice versa. So when I am grateful for what I have, I'm not reaching for more and going to those extremes of desire. I'm just staying in the middle. I'm grateful for what's here now and I am cultivating a sense of contentment and acceptance for what is here now and gratitude. Another way that I practice gratitude is at the end of every time that I do a meditation session, yoga session or Reiki session, I end with gratitude. So I put my hands up in prayer position, my thumbs against my third eye, and I simply say, thank you universe for Reiki, or thank you universe for med practice of meditation, or thank you for yoga. I say thank you a few times in my mind and I just allow the feeling of gratitude to flow out of me. It's like I can feel my heart becoming warm and expanded and I really feel connected to the universe. And saying thank you at the end reminds me that it's a gift to be able to have these practices in my life. So many people uh, haven't found these practices and they're full of stress in their life. So reminding myself that these practices are a gift helps me to have the motivation to continue those practices. The third thing that I do and believe that I feel makes me a better human is positive, unconditional self-talk of love. <laughs> so I make it a point to always talk to myself in a loving way and to have unconditional love for myself. Now, this is definitely a practice. I don't always succeed at this, but it gives me something to aim for every single day. When I notice that I'm being really hard on myself in my own mental talk, then I immediately, as soon as I notice that, I then redirect myself into positive self-talk. So congratulating myself for the things that I have done well instead of focusing so much energy on the things that I didn't do well. And I found that this unconditional love that I'm cultivating for myself through positive self-talk is gradually, gradually, gradually helping me to avoid those things that I don't want to do because in the past, when I used to be very obsessed with being perfect and right all the time, I would, you know, beat myself up and shame myself every time that I would make what I would perceive to be a mistake. Well, that doesn't really do very good for actually self-improvement whatsoever. In fact, I, for me, that was a detriment to my evolution. What really helped me so much is my realization that I needed to love myself no matter what. So, a concrete example of this. Recently, I, um, I, I had a rough couple days where I made a hasty decision. I spent a lot of money on something that I probably shouldn't have. It wasn't a very wise decision, but I was sleep deprived, first of all. I wasn't really feeling well. Um, there was a lot of chaotic energy in a lot of the people around me. There was just like a lot of factors that came together. And I just, I made a hasty purchase that then I couldn't take back. And I started noticing this like self, um, self talk that I was getting into as like, Anya, why did you do that? Ugh. And as soon as I noticed I was falling into that pattern, I redirected myself back into positive self-talk and where I was telling myself, um, I was reminding myself of how abundant I am. I was saying things like, Anya, it's amazing that you can totally have a lapse in judgment 
and spend way too much money, but yet it still doesn't really affect your everyday life. Wow, you are so abundant. You have come so far that you can make an error like this and it's still okay. You're not going to suffer. So I was like reminding myself of how abundant I was instead of just keeping going on in my head about this mistake that I made. So yeah, those are the three things that I do. Uh, I have it written on my refrigerator, in fact. You know, moderation, gratitude, and positive self-talk. Those are the three gifts that I offer myself on a daily basis. You could think of them as like the Anya precepts <laughs> instead of the Reiki precepts. Um, so I'm wondering um, from all of you, what are the things that you do what are the beliefs that you have? What are the things that you practice that make you a better human being? What are the things you do? So I invite you to comment here um, and I will share with everyone. And while people are typing in their responses, I want to share um, three responses that I received. So I sent out this question, how do you become a better human, um, to my newsletter and then my different social media. And I got three responses in particular that I would like to share with all of you. Um, I think they're quite wonderful. So the first one is um, from Anthony. And Anthony says, When you explore boldly, when you voluntarily confront the unknown, you gather information and build your renewed self out of that information. Researchers have recently discovered that this is true on a biological level. New genes in the central nervous system turn themselves on when an organism is placed in a new situation. These genes code for new proteins, which are the building blocks for new structures in the brain. When we face new challenges, we're not just gaining new experiences, we're activating dormant parts of our DNA and building upon ourselves on a neurological level. And then he quotes here at the end, a wonderful quote by Carl Jung. He says, that which you most need to find will be found where you least want to look. So I absolutely adore this um, comment from Anthony. And Anthony and I have shared a number of conversations about um, the merging of science and spirituality, how what we're discovering in science and psychology is completely in line with spiritual wisdom that humans have known for eons. And I love what he's saying here about um, when we go into the unknown, how it creates these changes in our DNA and our biological bodies. That's a really um, beautiful way to remember that we are always rewarded for going into the unknown and for intentionally bringing about change into our lives. A friend of mine, she is um, a fantastic medium and channeler, and we were talking the other day about how uh, people who are on the spiritual path, we, are, we realize that it's beneficial for humans to purposely put themselves in challenging situations to face their fears, to face their inner demons head on, because this way we can circumvent having traumas or outside forces come into our lives and kind of force us into growth. Um, for many human beings across the world, the way they grow, unfortunately, is only through disaster or trauma or really hard, difficult situations that kind of get thrown at them. It's not something they necessarily choose. So that's the way most people on this planet evolve today, I think. But once we start to have these inklings of um, spiritual questionings, we can start to really look within 
and look at our own demons and start to actively go into those, as Anthony says, um, when we voluntarily confront the unknown, then we rebuild ourselves, we renew ourselves, and we evolve. Also, um, I had a comment from Sue. There's actually two Sues. There's a Sue McCain. And Sue McCain says that how she becomes um, a better human is simply to love everyone. So I also have that as a central philosophy in my own life. Love everyone no matter who, no matter who they are. And then another Susan, Susan Aiken, says, honor what arises with compassion. So her and I have discussed this um, many times, and we both have spoken about how um, even when the dark things come up within us, that we can love those dark places and those shadows within us. And only by doing that do we become the parents to ourselves that we wish for. Kind of goes back to what I was saying about the unconditional positive self-talk. That um, it's only through unconditionally supporting ourselves and bringing ourselves that light and that love that we can transform. If we're constantly picking at ourselves and noticing our flaws, then how is that a good environment in which to become a better human? It's not. So, let's see here. We do have a comment <clears throat> from Kokai. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he says, Love is the intention and practice of caring, sharing, and cooperation among humanity, both female and male, so that together we can respectfully utilize the resources of Mother Earth along with creativity, knowledge, skills, and technology to bring good into the world for the benefit of all, freely. I love that. I especially like um, the uh, cooperation among both female and male. I think that's a huge, huge aspect to the evolution of the human species when we can recognize that we are equal and that male and female energies have an equal part to play. They're different, but they're equal in the sense of equally valuable. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. This journey of becoming a better human is not something that happens overnight. It's a process. It's definitely a process. So as we work together to look within ourselves, to love the shadows, the, even the dark places within us, and as we courageously move forward in our lives, noticing the places that we can improve and gently moving in that direction, it's my hope that through community such as this one, through patience, through love, that we will, that we are becoming better human beings to each other. And really the best way to, I think, become a better human being is to become a better, a better me. Only through becoming a better me can the whole world and planet shift. It's very, um, easy and tempting to look outside of ourselves and to want others to change, to want humanity as a whole to change. But 
if we can have the courage to look within ourselves, each of us, and strategize our own unique path of becoming a better human, then that is the way that everyone will shift. Everything will shift. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you would like to get in touch with me and talk with me, work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I invite you to do so. Please do. You can reach me at my website, anyalight.com, and there I provide healing sessions, intuitive life coaching, different trainings, and all sorts of wonderful things. So I work with people all over the world. I work with people in Northwest Ohio. I work in so many different settings and I, one of the highest joys in my life is working with people on their spiritual path, their spiritual healing journey. So please get in touch if you'd like to work with me. I'd appreciate it. <sighs> Namaste, beautiful friends. <laughs>